and welcome to the Just Interesting Podcast, the show that's not dull, it's not completely groundbreaking, but it's just interesting enough. And joining me, Alex, today, as always, we've got the regulars on. We've got <laughs> Robin. How are you, Robin? <laughs> oh, hello. Sorry, I, I thought, I, I didn't realise you were going to pause there. Um, I was expecting hello, some Alex. dramatic introduction, you know, like I was expecting some WWE music to start. Yeah. I was thinking, I, I was thinking gladiators. Yeah. 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 <laughs> gladiators, that's a throwback. Yeah. Um, yes, I mean, well, thank you, Alex. Happy to be here. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad. And we've also got with us. Are you ready, Martin? Well, we've got Martin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How are you, Martin? Are you okay? You, you're doing well? I am well. I am well. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. It's been a busy week, but a good Mark, week. Yeah. A good week. A lot going You've on. You've seemed very okay. busy this week. I have not been, so busy not been jealous, yeah. to be honest. It's <laughs> no, we, we were meant to record this yesterday. <laughs> and and let's be frank, I just haven't I haven't, I haven't even nearly done enough prep. I haven't really done any prep tonight either. But you know, this is this this is the times we're living in, and I apologise in advance. So I'm afraid that Robin and Alex, you're going to have to uh, pick up my slack this week. I'm afraid. No, but I'm, no, I'm, no, no, I'm happy no. to be. I'm happy to be talking to you, and it's always a pleasure. No, what, what I value most about Martin's contributions is the in, the insight. The spontaneous <laughs> insight that he brings to everything. It's the, so, it's the spontaneity, know. I think. People yeah, people come yeah. here for that. They want your 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 raw reaction to things anyway. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, you, you flatter me. I hope, Martin, you have been able to provide a quiz because I believe I have. this week is me versus Robin. Oh, The clash of the titans. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Not ready for a exactly. quiz, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first, before we get onto the quiz, we will, of course, be talking about some things that we've learned this week, as well as, to, I thought this week we'd talk about a lady called Henrietta Lacks, Ooh. who was in the news a lot last year because mm. she has immortal cells. <sighs> And it's quite an in-depth story, so we'll go into it in a little bit. But there's a whole question over the ethics of how they were used scientifically. But Ooh. it's a great story, so... Um, yeah, okay. Trust me, it's reaction. good. Trust me. <laughs> my immediate... The thing that popped into my head when you said immortal cells was just the bit from Team America where he goes, I will never die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite sure why. <laughs> anyway, I imagine that that's, that's very closely related. To, to oh, my cells. gosh. But before we get into the meat of the episode, first we wanted to thank our sponsors of today's podcast at, you probably guessed it, it's Surfshark, who has Yay. kindly sponsored this podcast again, because, I don't know, they must be mad, to be honest, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we love Surfshark. Surfshark is genuinely the VPN service that I use. Personally, I use it every day. I can thoroughly recommend it, you know. It's on when I turn my computer on. It just does what it needs to do. You can have it on unlimited devices as well, can't you? It's not just your PC or your Mac. I won't specify which kind of user you are, Alex. Um, but it could be your mobile phone, your tablet. Um, I guess your smart TV. I don't know. Is that a thing? Can VPNs do your smart TV? I don't they have can. a smart TV. I've got, I've got it on my smart TV, actually. Oh, do you? I've got okay. one. That, well, I've also got one of those Google Play ah, devices, and yeah, I've got yeah. it on that. And it does work for accessing all the different Netflix libraries. It's got the 15 largest Netflix libraries across the globe. Nice. Nice. Now, I use it on my phone. Sporting events and highlights. I know the the UFC geo-blocked in the uk i like, I like catching is. up on my on my sunday morning because i'm not staying up until 5 a.m to watch it no i'll wake up at 6 a.m and <laughs> and watch it then using the vpn little highlights so that's that's why i use it for as well as of course netflix catching up on the fast and furious movies alex you'll be pleased to know are you netflix australia oh. has them yes oh, oh, right. oh whereabouts are you up to one I've finished one. Okay. Well, you haven't, you haven't done very well then, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched two Fast Two Furious before, so, you know. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm on to three. seven more to watch, right. Martin. Martin's <laughs> taking it a quarter mile at a time, and that's all that counts. <laughs> <laughs> we often mention it, but we don't really explain, but their no-logs policy is quite an important one. And this is mm. what you... This is really, if you're getting a VPN service, genuinely, you need to look for one that does has a no-logs policy because it means that even if, it, like, the worst thing happened to Surfshark and they were hacked, they don't keep a log of any of your, like, browsing data. So there's literally nothing to hack. There's no no one... There's no way that your information can be lost. Um, and I think that's a really good feature of Surfshark. And for our listeners, we've got a very special deal. If you go to surfshark.deals forward slash interesting, you can get 83% off a two year plan with three months extra for free, which oh come on, I gosh. mean, that's just, 
That's just crazy, right? That's that crazy, crazy to be generous deal. So that that's, works. That works like out. Like two dollars a month, right? Exactly. Two dollars twenty per month. Given it away. Plus yeah. three months for free. That's less than a cup of coffee um, per month if you're going yeah, somewhere. For the whole that's thing. Um, insane. You won't even notice that. And what a price to pay for for peace of mind. Although I have to say. That is quite, seems like a big commitment, even with the three months for free, that's over two years committing yourself to this VPN service. What if, you know, what if I'm unsure about that? Well, Robin, that's crazy talk and you're going to love it. But if you are <laughs> unsure about it, then uh, you'll be glad to hear there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk, no risk. Why don't, why not sign up, give it a go, see if you like it. And, uh, and you'll be supporting the podcast if you do. So go to surfshark.deals forward slash interesting and sign up to Surfshark for a fantastic deal. Uh, and you'll be really helping us out at the same time. So there you go. Thank you, Surfshark VPN. Now on to the main bulk of today's podcast. Let's start with what we've learned this week. Robin, what, what, have, you, what have you brought to us this week? A what little tidbit little- of knowledge. Oh, thank you. It is a little mm-hmm. tidbit of knowledge. And uh, I don't know if our American listeners and viewers on YouTube will already know this, but I think certainly this isn't something I think we know much about in Britain. But this week I learned that George Washington, that president of the United States of America, was probably infertile. Sterile. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Did he not have kids? He, he didn't. He didn't. He never had kids. And the, oh. I, I remember thinking, like, he, I'm sure he had kids. I'm sure he did. Uh, what he did have was stepchildren. So he married Martha Washington, uh, previously Martha Curtis, who had been married to a man called Daniel Curtis, I think. And she had four children with him, two of whom survived to adulthood. And when Washington married her, um, he raised her two surviving children as his own. So there are portraits of them Mm. as a family. And I had that in mind. So when someone said he was infertile, I was like, nah, it's not true. But they think he was probably infertile because uh, when they got married, they've got personal letters and correspondence where they have every intention of having children. Uh, It's pretty certain that they tried, but it never happened. And we know that she was fine because she had four children. Um, so they think um, he was probably infertile. It was probably because of a bad infection of tuberculosis that he had as a child. Oh. Which can render And this you just infertile. made him really, really angry. And he, he decided to rebel against the UK, <laughs> the yes. Great Britain, <laughs> and uh, is responsible for forming a country, all because yep. he was infertile. Wow. I didn't know that, Robin. Thanks. Um, if I mean, that's... That's what you say, Alex. I don't think I said that, but you know. it's that's something else I learned this week. <laughs> it's interesting, though, to think that, like, how different would history be just oh. if you changed, like, little little details? Like, yeah, maybe if he wasn't infertile and became a family man, would uh, would he have bothered to, to go? And, that's an interesting question. Yeah, would he have had everything? those serene leadership qualities if he'd had uh, children mm. of his own, or would he? Would you know like the US Constitution be what it is today? Or would he be like, actually, no, I do want my kids to be in charge. <laughs> I do. I think I would like to be king. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, that's interesting. Supposition. Could have changed mm. everything. Yeah. 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 Interesting. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, how about, how about you? I know you've had a, well, you've had a busy time. <laughs> have, you, have you managed to? Yeah. yeah so I've got, I've got something. I've got something for you. And it's a, it's a, it's a, a story about... A, it was a World War II one, and you know, World War II is always interesting, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. So, in 1939, at the outbreak of war, um, <clears throat> in Britain, Britain being an island, there was a real concern that when the you know the bombs are dropping on London and potential uh, you know invasion of, of, with Germany, you know, uh, there wasn't mm. much food to go round, and rationing was you know was on the cards as well. And so, the British government sent out pamphlets to to the people, especially in the major cities like in London. And basically told people that they needed to kill their pets because there wasn't enough food to go around to feed the pets. There would be food, oh food, food shortages, yeah. and it was the best thing. It was the best thing to do. It was the right thing to do. And so, in one week in 1939, British people killed 750,000 of their own pets in one Whoa. week. Had them euthanized oh after God. this. These pamphlets were sent around by the government. And of course, uh, you know, uh, pet yeah. rescue centres like Battersea and the RSPCA were like, you know, what the hell are you doing? Don't don't go killing your pets. But yeah, people destroyed loads and loads of the animals as a result huh. of this, <clears throat> for fear that they wouldn't be able to 
to feed them. Kind of ironic, isn't it? You know, they might die, so let's kill yeah. them. But you know, they were using up food that could, would have to be, yeah. you know, yeah. would be used for for people as opposed to um, as opposed to pets. So yeah, did they use the pets for food? Because presumably they've got loads of meat, right? <laughs> when I first read this, I read like a headline. I was like, no, oh, sure, so, uh, yeah. yeah. I was like, they killed their food shortages, yeah. so they killed their pets. Yeah. Yeah. Was this this was just at the start of the war as well? Was there actually food shortages <laughs> yeah. at this point? Were they just looking for them and looking for any reason, of, yeah. any reason yeah, to well, kill their pets? Well, the first the first notices appeared in 1939, but I think this mass cull was after the first bombings in London in uh, uh, September 1940. Right. So it was right. a, yeah, it was a little bit later, but but I imagine that um, yeah, I just can't imagine that people would be so gung ho about killing their pets. Yeah, they must have been incredibly frightened. That's that's quite worrying, isn't it? Yeah, um, and then of course, I think you know after the war, when you know we all survived, and there wasn't. I mean, there were rash, there was rationing, wasn't there? But yeah. people weren't starving on the streets, may, may, mainly because of the um, the destruction of kind of the U boat menace and the Battle of Britain, you know, protecting the island. Um, but at the same time, I think a lot of people were a little bit miffed at the government that they'd been yeah. being told to kill their beloved Pluto the dog. Actually, that's from Disney, yeah. isn't it? Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Uh, to kill their dogs and cats uh, as a result of this kind of fear mongering and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah I can imagine fantastic. the arguments in the pub where someone's just like, they should never have told us to kill our pets. And someone else is saying, well, you might not be here now if you hadn't. I, for one, have no regrets. Mm. And then yeah. you've got Winston Churchill smoking a cigar. I'm like, in September 1940, now's my chance. To kill the pet. Yeah. <laughs> no, get rid of that, was that, was why he rose to that was why he rose to power. He just has a personal vendetta against all the dogs pets. in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mm. Well, that's really interesting, Martin. A bit sad, but very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, what did you learn, Alex? Well, I learned a little bit about the famous McDonald's mascot this week. Uh, Ronald McDonald. Oh, which one, Speedy or Ronald? Ronald, obviously. Speedy. Oh, I see. Who? Speedy. No, what's <laughs> the hamburger? What was Speedy? Yeah. The hamburger. Speedy. There's yeah. the hamburger. Speedy, Speedy, I believe the Speedy was the was original, like, original OG was that the purple mascot. one? Was he purple? Uh, I'm just well, no, going to The purple one, one was... Um, that was the hamburger, hamburger right? his name? No. The hamburger no. was you know, black and white stripes and with, white. The, with a mask. He on looked the... like an annoying kid, yeah. Yeah. Um, Speedy was the first McDonald's mascot before Ronald McDonald was created. There we go. Weird. Fair. Fair. Well, Knowledge. anyway, there's, there's a little bit, a tiny bit of a personal anecdote in, in what I've learned this week as well. But it's about how Ronald McDonald met his fate, his 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 end um it's a dark one this week, isn't it? drawn and quartered in 1996 <laughs> no it's not that dramatic to be honest oh. so he just a bit of background ronald mcdonald's was brought in to sell hamburgers in the 1960s and he was clearly marketed you know he was trying to they were targeting kids right to try and get kids interested Terrifying in mcdonald's clown, yeah. and um <laughs> so the clowns targeting kids this is out of context where's this going alex where's this going <laughs> i don't know how to phrase it but they were marketing towards children at this point in time and in the early yeah. 1970s he briefly starred in his own comic book series um, <laughs> from charlton comics he was on a tv show they had a oh. Ronald mcdonald tv show oh um gosh. wow yeah from mcdonald land i think it was called um <laughs> Wow. And this was all through the 1980s and 90s. I was going to say um, it was in the 80s. That so, it it sounds was. so 80s. Yeah. It actually came to an end in 2003, so probably later what? than you thought. And then from, wow. here, from here, this is where they start. They changed. They, there were some problems. Obviously, people were becoming more aware of how bad mm. McDonald's was for kids. And the fact that they were marketing it for children was becoming increasingly problematic, especially with things like Super Size Me. Um, so they yeah. started the I'm Goodness. Loving It campaign and they started slowly phasing Ronald out. No. He would still crop up every so often, but he would slowly, slowly be phased out. And then what happened in 2016? Hmm. I think it was 2016. Is it 2016? Donald Trump. 2015. Right? Oh, okay. Ronald McDonald Trump. Yeah. 2016. 2016. There was the killer clown craze, and of course, oh, of, course. Oh, of, um, yeah. of it yeah. and Pennywise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Gosh, yes. Yeah. And this was basically the nail in the coffin for 
run on the <laughs> cloud. He hasn't he hasn't been seen since. Um, right. <laughs> oh my gosh! I've just got this image of a real person. I think Ronald is a real person. And he's just going into the office like, and he's been fe- he's he's been feeling the pressure for years on end now. He's got a small <laughs> desk in the corner, and he opens <laughs> and he sees the headlines about the killer clowns. He's, his face just sinks, and the boss walks on over and says, "Ronald, you got a moment." And he's got a little <laughs> piece of paper, a little green piece of paper with a signature he's on it. Paints a tear on. <laughs> <laughs> paints a tear on his face. <laughs> and then he um, walks, walks out the back door and all the other McDonald's employees are like, and we never saw him again. <laughs> Yeah, just packed his things. He's packed his box. He's just got some big clown shoes in there, just like one flower that sprays water. Um, <laughs> and the chicken McNuggets were very pink that day. Yeah, but for those of you who don't remember the killer clown craze, basically a random part. I'm sure everyone remembers don't. it, but a random towns in America, people were dressing up as clowns and scaring people, and it kind of originated, I think, from like YouTube prank channels. Um, but, and this is the personal anecdote that many people don't know about this. When I first started working with you guys, mm. I was working on the Facebook channel for the our, our channel that mu- shall not be named, making like ah. Facebook videos. And one mm. of the videos I made, the most popular one, <laughs> was about this killer clown craze that got 30 million views. So... I'm sure I didn't have any influence in the decision making here by McDonald's, but I would say that there's about a one percent chance that I'm responsible <laughs> for the death of Ronald McDonald. <laughs> hey, Alex, I would, yeah, I take yeah. that claim. That's your video. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I think you did it on like on the cusp before, just before it became huge. You made that video. I remember that. Yeah, so I, I like the beginning of the, of the craze. I made it. Yeah, it you blew it. up, and then about a week later, all this, these sightings were starting to crop up a bit more. So. I don't want to it, say that I'm responsible for for all the scare, fear yeah. migraine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. I think it was going to yeah. happen anyway. I and think it, it was, was a huge success the, off the back. I think of that, it was so more towards it being. Warner Brothers and stuff. owes you some royalties, Alex, for, yeah, for the free I marketing so. you did. Yeah, I think so. I'm also exactly. probably inviting a lawsuit from Ronald McDonald and, <laughs> and Stephen King. Uh, well, Ronald McDonald isn't alive anymore. We know he's been turned into. <laughs> Hamburgers. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was quite. Amusing. He's been minced, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. regardless, they were clearly going to phase him out, weren't they? I mean, what a scary mascot! What a yeah, I mean, as a child, I don't remember mascot. him ever appealing to me at all. I just <laughs> no, no, no. Like, yeah, he was off-putting when he saw his face on your Happy Meal. Recognisable, yeah. but not nice. Yeah. <laughs> Icon- yeah. <laughs> Iconic but creepy, <laughs> and terrifying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Scary bastard. <laughs> scary bastard yeah mm-hmm. well thank you gentlemen for letting me know what you've learned this week now shall we move on to some of our favorite youtube comments of the week yeah so i've got a comment from alexander spencer and i think what we were saying the other week where you don't remember the context of the comment but you, it's just so good that you have to have to read it out this one this one tickled me so This is in last week's podcast. He commented, As a Canadian, I can confirm that no human alive could beat a goose in a fight. They are made out of (laughs) hatred and homicide. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Which is great. I think I I do actually remember it now. It was when we were talking about uh, the survey where people were deciding what they could beat up in a fight. Um, I think a goose was pretty high as well, wasn't it? It was like 50%. People thought it could be a goose. Nah, it's not going to happen. I I agree with that. Thomas. Was it Thomas? Out of know, it depends. Alexander Spencer, yeah. Made Alexander, out of sorry. Hatred and homicide. <laughs> like that. So um, good. Yeah, I mean, if you've played Untitled Goose Game, then. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good game. Yeah. You don't know. Yes. <laughs> Definitely agree with that. Um, I've got a comment from uh, Kerfies, K E R F I E S. Apologies for my mispronouncing that. Um, on Actually, on a Patreon video we did uh, about the deep fake technology uh lucasfilm hiring a deep fake artist um and in particular we were talking about um the spoilers here for the mandalorian season two finale if anybody's not seen it <laughs> sh- close your ears now um 
Oh, wait, we start. spoke about it. <laughs> we spoke about it. We spoke about it, and it involved some deep faking and making an actor look younger again. Um, yeah. And uh, Kerfee says, as deep fakes get better and voice deep fakes starting to improve, I honestly believe one day computers will be able to learn and imitate human traits and styles. In 50 years, we could end up with a Tom Hanks performance in the body of a young Will Smith, directed in the style of Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> well, this is what no, we're saying, like wasn't that. it? Like, yeah, like actors. Do, do actors even need to exist anymore? Can they just turn up on set and have a three D scan of their face scanned, and then yes, yeah. all done in post? Like, just retire, get the royalties. Yeah. Just... Are we going to still be watching Robert De Niro in a hundred years' time, um, making his Beating gangster films? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was weird, though, wasn't it? That did not work. In the did, Irishman, yeah. yeah, kicking like an old man. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, in in the Irishman, isn't it? Where he, yeah. he beats someone up and they got got him in a younger body, but he stirs the movements of an old man. It's really weird. Yeah, to be honest, the de aging in that film as a whole, after a while, you kind of get used to it and it works. But even then, it was like young Robert De Niro still looked like fifty year old Robert De Niro. <laughs> still, very, still very impressive, and it didn't it didn't receive any yeah. awards. But I actually, I actually really quite enjoyed it. Mm. I enjoyed it. I thought it was, a good film. Uh, yeah, a great film. Yeah. 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 Yeah, really yeah. yeah. Well, I've got a comment from Val Van Nowhere, and um, and this was in relation to us talking about marzipan and not particularly liking it and oh, saying yeah. it's a bit of a love it or hate it kind of thing, a bit like Marmite. Mm. And so Val says, I'm sorry, but this podcast made me lose all respect I have for you guys. You're sick comparing marzipan to Marmite. I don't think we're comparing the two, but we're just saying that, you know, they love it or hate it. Yeah. And then and then and then they made an edit. They said, sorry guys. I forgot you're British. You shouldn't be judged based on growing up in a culture that thinks that stuffing some brown sauce and meat into soggy bread is the height of culinary arts. So I think well, I, I bit, feel very angry. Yeah. I feel a bit offended. A friend likes marzipan. Yeah. I never claimed yeah. soggy bread. That's not a British. <laughs> soggy I'm bread try, is not a British I'm thing. To think about, what? I'm trying to think we about like what? stuffing crisp. brown sauce and meat into yeah, soggy talking, bread. I'm guessing it's bacon butty with brown sauce mm, but for the no, record I, I don't like brown sauce and I'm vegetarian pasty. yeah <laughs> so I'll just have <laughs> ketchup instead okay maybe you're onto something <laughs> ketchup yeah ketchup yeah, yeah. actually yeah. when you mentioned yeah. bacon butty I was like oh yeah I could go for one of those so yeah so maybe, maybe, maybe they mm. are onto something in fairness no that's that's fair, <laughs> fair enough <laughs> that's an astute observation <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. But I think there is a, there's definitely a reputation in the UK of having terrible food. And there is. But then I had the worst pizza I've ever had in my life in Rome. And uh, don't get me started going to America. But it, depend, it depends mm. on where you go, doesn't it? It depends on it where does. you go and what you yeah. have. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it's... I don't know if... I'm sad to hear that the reputation might be that Britain has bad food. I think it's more that we have terribly unhealthy and uncomplicated yeah. food. And but unappealing actually, looking, like yeah, unappetizing like food. Like just brown. But British food, I genuinely, genuinely the best. Yeah. Partly because <laughs> we have such variety <laughs> and we pinch it from everywhere else. No, well, that's, more, that's awesome. more of what it is really, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> there are, I mean, there are some pub staples that people don't necessarily know about if they're not from here. Like Imagine. going again, going again, a, a pint of cast bitter and having a pie. I was going to say, fantastic. British that's pie. what he's talking about. That's the soggy bread and meat. Uh, it's, 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 it's done properly. Yeah. It's done properly. No, it shouldn't yeah. be soggy. It should be crisp. Do you know what? It's been a bit. Mm. A it's been now. a bit dangerous. Me moving to Scotland because Scottish, like this, like Scottish food is just. Mm. Mwah. It meets my my every expectation. Shortbread <laughs> is the best biscuit out of, all the, best, out of all yeah. the biscuits. Fudge the is like my favourite food of all time. Haggis, didn't think I'd like haggis. That's an example of something that looks totally uh, unappetising and sounds gross, but is amazing. <laughs> it tastes delicious. Oh, it's great. <laughs> well, because you're, you're in actual Scotland, yeah. the haggis we get in England is mass-produced, terrible stuff. You get in the supermarket, right? But if you actually go to Scotland, yeah. the haggis is decent there. Yeah, I mean, I still get there it from the supermarket, but... <laughs> Do you get McSween? Is it McSween's uh, I guess? No, I get Simon Howie's. Oh, there Simon you go. Howie's. It's the McSween. It McSween, good. all the inroads into England, and uh, that's all you can get. Oh, right. Oh, right. Fair it's enough. Yeah, banished from Scotland, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost certainly. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, for all of your comments. Uh, keep them coming in. And that was a great idea to mention one from the Patreon we recorded um we've just put out another one today of uh what do we talk about on the patreon well we spoke about michael gove <laughs> a cabinet minister in the uk who went on a night we out indeed. drunken yeah. night out on his own 
Well, so we spoke yeah. about that. That was quite a lighthearted one. We also recently recorded one about uh, our thoughts yeah, on the week. whole Afghanistan withdrawal. Yeah. Um, slightly more serious. Slightly more, yeah. a bit more serious. <laughs> um, so they kind of balance out. And we also spoke about another one last night, didn't we? Uh, Chinese... Uh, the Chinese government's yes. crackdown on celebrity culture, uh, deleting celebrities yes. from the internet. Yeah, so yeah. that'll be going live uh, very soon. So, uh, for our so yeah, lots to take fancy there. So there's a lots of yeah, different fancy, topics yeah. that we yeah. speak about over on Patreon um, that you can get access to that, along with I think over 50 other videos that we've made on there for as little as three dollars a month. So if you fancy supporting us, head over there and uh, feel free to give it a watch. But with that, shall we move on to our main? topic of conversation this week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes please so what i wanted to talk about this week was the story of henrietta lax um and henrietta lax was a lady born in roanoke virginia in 1920 just two days after women were given the right to vote in the united states mm. she had a it's fair to say that she had a pretty difficult life um her mother died while giving birth to a 10th child and she died when Henrietta was just four years old. Mm. Henrietta worked out... That's unlucky. Very unlucky, yeah. Um, <laughs> she worked out in a local tobacco field and dropped out of school in the sixth grade so she could support her family. Um, mm. And eventually she had children of her own, um, five in total. And her first one was when she was just 14 years old. However, when she was 30 years old in 1951, she felt what she described as a knot in her womb. She went to uh, Johns Hopkins University, which was the only university at, in the area that would treat black patients at the time. So this was the only place she could go to even get treatment. Um, Gosh, yeah. And she saw Howard Jones there, um, who was a physician, and he took a biopsy. So he took some of her tissue for testing. Um, and sadly, he concluded that she had cervical cancer. And it was very aggressive, this cancer. And by the end of the year, sadly, Henrietta had passed away. Oh, um, so it was a very sad start to the story. It gets a bit more complicated, though. Mm -hmm. So during her treatment, she also had two further tissue samples taken from her. And these were taken without her prior knowledge. Um, so this physician, Mr. Howard, Dr. Howard, took some healthy cells from her and he took some cancerous cells from her. And these okay. were sent to cell biologist George Otto Gay, who um, discovered something remarkable about these cells. So before I go into it, it's worth explaining this. So our cells in, our hu in the human body undergo many divisions throughout our lifetime. Normally, they divide approximately 40 to 60 times throughout our life. But there's a natural cap on the amount of times that human cells can divide. And this is called the Hayflick limit. So that's kind of why we age and why we die, basically, in simple terms. Uh, we stop getting new cells and they just... Eventually, eventually yeah, just, they yeah. reach a, a point where they can no longer replicate. And that's why we, we slowly age and, and die. Um, mm. And George Otto Gay had been trying to culture cells in his lab for years to like keep them growing and keep them replicating. Um, but no matter what he tried, under like lab conditions, they would always die off, no matter what. And it's, this is important because getting new samples at this point in time was a very slow process. It was, sl it was the bottleneck, basically, to far greater scientific research and understanding. It was, a, it was a lengthy process getting samples from every individual. And that was why Henrietta's cells were so remarkable, because the cancer cells that were taken from her they kept on dividing and thriving, even in lab conditions. They were immortal. Her cells were immortal. And these cells are still wow. alive today. Wow. So part of Henrietta has been alive for, you know, uh, over 100 years now since she was born. So, so, she, so she had cancer. Well, cancer cells divide quite rapidly, don't they, anyway? Is that, that's right. So yeah. So cancer, 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 cancer spreads. cells don't have the Hayflick limit. They can keep, oh, okay, keep yeah. dividing and growing. But in a lab setting, they will still, still die. Um, mm. Most, most okay. cells yeah. will still die off after a few, few days. So, so, so what is this? Is this just a big mass then? What, what, how does, what, what are they actually, what's actually in the lab? Do we know? 
so it's human tissue so it's human tissue samples oh, okay um so human body cells or um yeah or i'm not sure what hmm. cells they were that were actually taken they were taken from our cervix so for the first time ever scientists had access to an unlimited supply of genuine human tissue that was cheap to manufacture on mass which was huge this is such a massive scientific uh breakthrough and george otto gay started handing out cells which were called healer cells uh after the woman that they came from henrietta Lacks healer um, h-e-l-a h-e-l-a right. yeah. yeah. and he handed them out to anyone who wanted them in a ho in the hopes that they would be used to make breakthroughs in ma many areas of medical science so it's a nice thing for him to do in fairness he could have taken them all for himself and commercialized it i'm sure but he, he handed them out. <laughs> uh, All the serves. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound that ethical, I've got to be honest with you, Alex, though. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, countless scientific breakthroughs were made with this. Like, they were instrumental in developing the first polio vaccine, discovering, oh, wow. I, discovering IVF, researching different viruses, including HIV, HPV, herpes, mumps, measles, and, yes, even COVID. Um, Healer yeah. cells have been used in the research for COVID vaccines. Um, more than a hundred thousand scientific papers have been written with HeLa cells as you know part of being involved in the scientific research of these papers. Um, five oh. Nobel, at least five no Nobel prizes have been won based on research using HeLa cells. Right. Okay. This is it was such a monumental breakthrough. These cells. But you're right, Martin. The story is complicated for reasons that I've already mentioned because this wasn't very ethical or. Well, there's a question mark over the ethics of this um, because these cells were taken without Henrietta's knowledge or consent and they're still being used all across the world to develop life-changing medic medication but mm. for the benefit of large pharmaceutical companies. Mm. Meanwhile, even, Henrietta's children, yeah. her grandchildren and other relatives, some of whom were living in abject poverty, had absolutely no idea that her cells were being used like this for at least 25 years. I mean, yeah. what, that's, what do you think? Um, yeah. Even the university has benefited, right? Because they sell vials, not just the university, but there are companies, including the university, who sell vials of these cells from um, the, the original sample um, for about a hundred or several thousand dollars each for each vial. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big a, industry. It is. And it's, it's a question of who who does this actually belong to? I mean, does her cells belong to her relatives? Do they belong to anyone? It's, it's difficult to know, really. It's, can you lay claim upon a great, great, great relative? But also a fundamental... Of course, they shouldn't have... Yeah. You know, the they fundamental have, question they of... They shouldn't have like, stolen the, the cells, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Martin. <laughs> sorry, mate. Carry on. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, the fundamental question, do we have a right to our own body cells <laughs> our own human tissue um well technically we don't do we there is um something called the common rule in america which was published in 1991 but i think it was drafted in 1981 after something that was drawn up in 1979 which is basically saying that you have to have consent you have to have explicit informed consent when using any person's uh body parts <laughs> for medical <laughs> research um but beyond that you can do what you like see that's interesting so that was drawn yeah. up in 1979 did you say uh yeah 79 eight, 1980 yeah mm. and, well, that's... and not published till 1991 yeah but that oh okay not published till 1991 yeah. well that could that could explain some of the next bits of the story because okay so at the time anyway this wasn't again and possibly now as well this wasn't against the law it was pretty standard procedure to take tissue without permission um mm -hmm. and i i don't think that rule's changed although you after what you said maybe it has uh but any material obtained during surgery for example like if you had your arm amputated you can't ask the hospital to have for your arm back but like <laughs> Like they can, they'll keep that arm. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't have a right you, to you, it. There's, I mean, if you did have your arm amputated, wouldn't you have to? Wouldn't there be some kind of consent form that about them, you know, disposing of it or using yeah. it for science? Yeah, yeah, using yeah. It for science more than dispose. Yeah, and they'd probably refuse to take the arm if you don't if you don't give consent to that. So you, 
I imagine no, it's I want, catch I want to keep the arm. <laughs> I want. I want. I, I want to sign the uh, the arm out of the hospital with me. Yeah, but the but the other interesting development in this, which I'm I'm actually interested to find out how this works with what you said, Robin was. So in 1990, a man called John Moore tested this in California Supreme Court. Um, so he was suffering from right. leukemia, and um, discovered that his cells were also an immortal cell line. Yeah, I should say like since. Uh, healer cells there have also been other immortal cell lines discovered but none of them are quite as good as hers hers still you know spread and uh divide ag really aggressively um but yeah this man john moore discovered his cells were also an immortal cell line and his physician had been trying to commercialize them and make a profit from his cells so he took the physician to court um, because he wanted a slice of that pie. He wanted some mm -hmm. of that money. Um, but the court ruled in the doctor's favor, making it clear an individual hasn't got any rights to their discarded bodily waste. <laughs> um, mm. Oh, man, that's such a weird one, isn't it? Because they might not have a right to be able to keep it, but so the other person doesn't have a right to be able to commercialize it for their own gain, right? There's a bit of a leap there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, it's, of, yeah. It's, it's quite, that's a gray area. It's like, so yeah, I mean, if someone throws away an if someone say threw away an antique in, into the mm. unknowingly into the bin and I took it and sold it for millions, would I expect to be able to keep all that money? I don't know. Mm. Or Maybe, if it's something but like it's unethical, isn't it? Like just think about dust, right, around your house. Yeah. Everyone knows dust is chiefly made comprised of human cells, you know, discarded skin cells and uh, hair that's died and fallen off the body you know, as we molt. Um, what if someone came into your house when you were away, like hoovered up your dust <laughs> and then started using it, you know, for commercial purposes? You're like, oh, wow, someone's, someone's, someone's been kind enough to hoover my house. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, where did, would I, <laughs> at, I at first, I'd be quite yeah. happy. I'd be like, oh, clean this, come in and clean my house. That's nice of them. <laughs> but then, yeah, you're right. If they started making money off it, I'd be pretty pissed off. <laughs> yeah. But well, how would you claim that, though? Because you just like... it's. It's, it's my property. So it's not your property because it fell off. It was dead cells and you weren't, you clearly didn't care about it. Well, so yeah, it kind of, of I guess. Sense. It's like if you throw out rubbish and someone takes it and find yeah. us keepers at that point. Although not if they broke into your house. That's that's a different story. I mean, no, that's a different issue, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, what, what if you hired a cleaner and your cleaner saw an opportunity for medical research and <laughs> used, <laughs> used all the stuff they cleaned up, took the duster, pristine to the... I mean, yeah, yeah. So yes. Research that. It's, it's, it's also an interesting thing of value, isn't it? Like, mm. if they stole, if they stole something of your mantelpiece, you'd be annoyed because yes. there's an inherent value to that. Yes. Uh, and there might be value to your skin cells, even even just because you don't know about it. Is your is it your property in your house if someone mm. comes in and mm. takes that? What about, <laughs> for know. example, there's there's a special type of blood, isn't there? that like one percent of people have where it is fully compatible with all other blood types and i think maybe maybe not over here but in america anyway they actually pay people to give with this blood type mm. to give their blood like AB positive or something um like yeah some, something like that right so what I about if they had to go in for <laughs> surgery for something completely unrelated mm. could the doctor just take a couple of pints of their blood just while they're there mm. not have to pay them the money that they're, they're paying normally i guess as long as they've got and i think this is how the common rule works okay so, so two things here if, this, if we're in america they've got this thing called the common rule which is actually only applies to signatories and it's federal agencies that have signed up to it so technically only federal agencies i think there's about 20 of them that have signed up to the common rule have to follow it hmm. everybody else all private institutions don't have to follow it at all because they haven't signed up to it um but they do. I think the common practice, it's called the common rule because everyone's like, yeah, we'll try to um, live up to these standards, these ethical standards. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is that actually it's entirely self-enforced. I think even the, the regulations themselves in the common rule say it's up to the institution to make sure that they stick to the rules. Yeah. There's no there's no external policing of it at all. So everyone could discard the common rule if they wanted to. <laughs> wow. Um, and then the third yeah. thing is in that situation, the common rule does say, assuming you're following it, um, that, yeah, if the doctor gets consent, informed consent from the patient, um, which presumably would mean that they'd have to be 
not under anesthetic or anything at the time. It's not like they're in mid-operation. The doctor's like, oh, by the way, uh, I'm just going to take some of your blood. Uh, you'd have to talk to them beforehand and presume yeah. you get written consent and say, would you be okay with me, you know, <laughs> putting in buckets any blood that comes out of you whilst we're cutting you open? Um, and I guess you'd have to say explicitly no, or you might say yes. I mean, would you would you say no? If, if a doctor said, when you when we cut off your arm, by the way, you're going to bleed a lot. Uh, would you mind if I collected it and used it for blood transfusions? Um, well, we, I'm that? sure we wouldn't say no. No. For blood transfusions, but he's not saying I'm going to commercialise it and make millions. That's true. Well, I suppose you'd have to... Oh, I think, mm, good question. I think the common rule might... Oh, might... I don't know, actually. if it, it might compel them to disclose that intention, but actually it might not. Um, that's the thing. Do you have to say like that's yeah. Because that's what it comes down yeah. to. That's that's the crux of it. Whether they can are make you, money from you, it. Yeah. Or just are, are you benefiting at the practice. expense of someone else's ignorance? Yeah. I mean, a counter argument is, so what's a value, right, is the, is the research done with your body cells, isn't it? Sure. So, yeah. if, so this fella, uh, the, the, the doctor who took um, Henrietta Lacks' blood, good blood, sorry, uh, cells, could have just left them to culture and they could still be alive now in a Petri dish in a cupboard somewhere and he hasn't done anything with them. So they're only, yeah. they're, only as, they're only valuable because other people can use them for their research, which has changed lives. So in a way, yeah. the monetary value is in the research, right? And in the hard work that the scientists are doing, not in the raw materials that they're using. Yeah, I guess so. It's a bit like a startup company. You, don't, you can't really assess the potential value in all cases. Um, you don't know how much it's worth, basically, right at the start until more research has been carried out into it. I know what you're saying, but it's still it's still inherently valuable, isn't it? These cells are still inherently valuable. Whether yeah. that's on purpose, whether mm. that's kind of a uh, yeah, a purposeful thing or not. So in this case it's clearly mm. not. She has no idea what her cells you know, how, how valuable her cells could be. Yeah. But there's still yeah, at the same time. It's the same thing as like if someone's a I don't know, like a sperm donor or something and has and say they had a desirable characteristic. It's nothing to really do with them, is it? It's not. Mm. But someone might, you know, might mm. want to to pay them for that particular sample, as it were, as opposed to someone else. So it's more valuable, even though it's nothing to do with the person. Mm. You know, it's pure luck, pure chance. That's true. Yeah. Let me let me um, throw. Oh, sorry, Robin. No, you finish. Sperm thought. donors typically get paid, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You, they get paid, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah. Let me throw a ridiculous hypothetical at both of you, though. What if? Yeah. What if someone had cells in their body that could, I'm not sure how, I don't, I'm not a scientist, but <laughs> using research, they could cure cancer with their mm. cells. But this person just wanted to watch the world burn. <laughs> and no, and so. like, no matter what scientists or people, however much money that people wanted to throw at them, yeah. they were just saying, no, you can't have my cells. You cannot have my cells. Do you think at that like is there a point where it, it's no longer up to them? The research that could be carried out could save oh, millions of lives. I mean, on a smaller scale, this is what's done every day with all the organ donor uh, conversation, isn't it? Mm. You get people who say it's my body. Yes, you know, I want to help people, but ultimately, it's my body, and this is what I want to do. Mm. And regardless of what the benefit could be, they say no, no, I'm all right, thanks. But that's the thought of someone else. That's a good point. You know, using them, or you know, yeah. For a lot of people, I think it's a fairly abstract concept of of not being complete when they die. You know, with organ donation specifically. But it's that it's that same thing of like a uh, not of the mm. the thought of someone else interfering with what's yours is the, is the main thing, isn't it? Mm. Uh, is that does that mean that everyone should have to donate parts of their body for for greater good and? I'm very much in terms, you know, in regards to that. I very much would encourage people to, and I'm, I'm definitely for an opt-out system as, a, as opposed to an opt-in when it comes to donations. Mm. Mm. Maybe, maybe it's something similar. It isn't that what a, we have in the UK? Isn't it? An opt we do now. I think so. Donor, we do donor now. system, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hammer this home, Martin. You're a physician. You've got yeah. some cancer patients. You could you save their lives. steal those cells. What do you do? And you've got this one asshole. What about? Who's refusing on to give you their level. amazing yeah, miracle I mean, cells? Yeah. Strike me from the profession. I'm stealing your cells. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. If you say it like that, you you could cure cancer. 
because and someone's just yeah they didn't ask Henrietta for permission no but imagine if they had and she said no like mm. that she wouldn't understand I mean I'm sure she wouldn't but those mm. that knew her described her as like a lovely warm person <laughs> um, so I'm sure she would be ha more than happy to but imagine if she said no mm. all this research you know the polio vaccine all these research yeah. into all these, these countless world changing things world changing yeah. things wouldn't they, have gone, gone right? ahead from from the you recounting the story alex am i right in thinking that they took the cells before knowing that there was any they went and they sent them off to get tested right it was standard it procedure like, yeah it wasn't like it wasn't like oh, these ones can cure cancer what do I do? I'll, I'll, I'll take them. It was for the greater good. Exactly, they very much yeah. took them yeah. and then realised that... Yeah, yeah. so that it, was, it, it, it was standard done. procedure because mm. samples were so difficult to come by. They, it would just be standard yeah. procedure to take the samples. And then Howard Jones sent them off to a cell biologist who then discovered yeah. this. Um, yeah. But they would have known within days if, or weeks that these cells were extraordinary because cells normally died after a very short period of time. I think it was a matter of days. Exactly, um, yeah. So after a week or a month or two, and it was, what, uh, nearly a year between her getting the diagnosis and dying. So there was plenty of time for them to go back and tell her. But the law didn't require it, did it? I don't think no. at the time. No, there was no, no requirement for them to, to tell her that they'd taken her cells and were planning to use them for, for research. Mm. And, of course, she was African-American, so I'm sure they didn't really care much um, to tell her. But... Um, mm. Yeah, there was, if the law, if the common rule, for example, had been in place back then, they would have had plenty of time to say, oh, by the way, we think your cells are special and they could be really useful Will you give them to us. Um, even if, yeah, I get the point you're making, Martin, which is that they, they took them with no malice intent. They just wanted to, they were just, mm. yeah, following the standard medical procedures to try to make a diagnosis. And then they noticed they were special. But then they had time to act upon that. Yeah, ask her permission. yeah yeah i'm not sure about the actual like timings of things but yeah i mean mm -hmm. it was a pretty aggressive cancer but you're right i think i think they would have had time um but what if they didn't another hypothetical <laughs> instead replace mm. the asshole dude who mm. refuses to give consent with a someone in a coma they can't oh, give gosh. informed consent and they may never wake up what do mm. you do then there do you still take the cells? And the family, surely. Their family may know, know them as a lovely, loving person yeah. who would definitely say yes if he was awake. Yeah. But he's not. You can divorce mm. people who are in a coma, can't you? I'm pretty sure you can. So if you're allowed <laughs> to divorce someone who's in a coma... <laughs> You're allowed you to take allowed, ourselves. <laughs> should, you should be allowed to pass the burden of consent on to a family member, uh, I would say. Um, I think that's the answer in that situation, mm. isn't it? Um, but then what about if their family members are assholes? But they were lovely people who definitely would. What if would. the entire family is in a coma oh, yeah. and they were all assholes and everyone who knew them knows <laughs> that they would have refused? There's all um, these like countless hypotheticals, but the point fine, is... Fine, fine, we'll, yeah. we'll, ask, we'll ask the great aunt, also in a coma, and an asshole. <laughs> Why are they in the coma? Children? They're car crash. <laughs> They're all just... Oh, <laughs> a giant car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, it's... it's so, it is a good question. I genuinely don't know because it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Do the do the ends justify the means? There's a bit of Machiavelli about this. Mm. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a similar thing. Do you remember like Twenty Three and Me? One and all the companies like Twenty Three and Me. Yeah. When you give off, a, send off a genetic sample for analysis, they've got all that data and in the terms and conditions that they have. Yeah, like some pretty scary yeah. clauses saying, <laughs> oh, they're keeping it. By the way, yeah, every, all the information you give us can be used. And I think it's 23andMe that has an explicit clause that's something like, um, could be used against your interests, I think is what they say. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And well, I yeah, think they, that they, like the government has access to it as well. Exactly, <laughs> because the government can use it. They work with federal, uh, well, not just federal, but I guess um, uh, law enforcement. And that, isn't that how they caught the um, serial killer in, was it? 2018, the uh, yeah, the Golden that. State Killer Golden State. from was it the 70s or was it the 80s? Um, and they never caught him. And then 
one of his relatives did 23 and me and they had a dna sample from one of the crime scenes no and way. They, they compared it to the database that 23 and me had and it, it wow. matched a relative and they were able to track down the killer and <laughs> that's crazy him. he must be so pissed crazy. off like he didn't even do anything yeah. wrong <laughs> that was just his relative <laughs> would have gone away with it too if it hadn't been for that nosy yeah, genetic I'd, analysis. I'd like to rephrase that he did plenty wrong well, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say he might have well, done something well, yeah. what I mean is like he didn't he didn't do anything to give you know give himself away yeah. Yeah. Himself yeah. away yeah. Yeah. it was, it was <laughs> that sounded so bad <laughs> <laughs> he did nothing wrong yeah. Um, so, so there's there's an interesting <laughs> I can't remember why I brought that up like that because what, what was your question your question was um, you don't know what value your genes and the information about you could be mm. to society as a whole yeah. right you don't know the unforeseen so even if they say we'd, we'd like to use your cells for research there's nothing special about them but we'd like to use them mm. and you say no there could be a side thing like this Golden State killer was caught because one of his relatives did a 23 me test. You know, it's kind of like there yeah. could be something else that you don't realize you're contributing to. Mm -hmm. So even if there's nothing special about you, medically speaking, you might end up contributing something wonderful. Mm. Um, of well, course, true. Yeah, what's the, um, there is that fear mongering, which I think isn't the movie Gattaca kind of about this in the future where, you know, genetic manipulation can occur and people can, um, you can make, um, prognoses about people's medical health in later life based on their genes so as a baby you take a gene sample you you determine what illnesses they're likely to get how healthy they're going to be in later life their life expectancy based on their genes um and you can make all kinds of some people think that's really useful i could try to combat my potential illnesses in later life if i knew when i was young what i'm at risk of developing later in life yeah. but other people are saying well that's scary because you can put some kind of there's nothing to stop anybody particularly a government putting or companies co corporations putting a value on someone's life by saying we know from your genetic material taken from you as a baby without your consent presumably or with your parents consent um that you're probably going to get a uh, lung disease yeah. when you're when you're 45 so good luck getting you. life insurance yeah yeah you know exactly <laughs> yeah, that kind of yeah. thing so um Mm. There's, I think I'm talking myself into saying, if someone asks for your consent, give it, because you don't know how beneficial it's going to be. But at the same time, maybe they should add something to the consent forms that guarantees um, you are able to monitor who sees the information that you're consenting to give up. Does that make sense? Well, Robin... In a roundabout way, I'm going to bring it back to the story here because you've just Whoa. you've just basically hit the hit the nail on the head, mate. Oh, really? Okay. So <laughs> another problem with this healer cells thing, the, like the mm. final issue, I guess, with it, that the family of Henrietta Lacks raised was an issue of privacy, oh. and it, I mean, it was used in a very fantastic example with that Golden State killer. Like he didn't give consent, but yeah, they not. tracked him down because of it. Mm. It was a good thing on balance. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah. so in March 2013, researchers published the DNA sequence of the genome of a strain of HeLa cells. And the Lacks family objected to this because the genetic information was available for public access. Their yeah. kind of genetic information. Uh, um, they, they, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jerry Lacks Y, a grandchild of Henrietta Lacks, said to the New York Times, the biggest concern was privacy, what information was actually going to be out there about our grandmother and what information they could obtain from her sequencing that would tell them about her children and grandchildren going down the line. Um, and what transpired with this is they basically made an agreement with the uh, National Institute of Health um, that gave them some control over access to the cell's DNA sequence. So it doesn't go into specifics what access this was, but they had some level of control in knowing where the information mm. was going to, which I think was okay. quite good, quite good. Um, and they also got a promise of acknowledgement in, in future scientific papers. It's an interesting discussion though, isn't it? It's a really kind mm. of ethically questionable area. Where does the value lie? Do we have a right to our own, yeah. you know, body cells at the end of the day? Um, I'd be interested to hear what the comments think on this one, but yeah. it's a really fascinating story. Um, mm. And it's, it's, it's a good thing. 
at the very least that she's received a lot more recognition now i think she made a list of like top u.s most influential women of all time and she's had i think johns hopkins has a statue of her outside one of their campuses now nice um, that's good it's good yeah. that she's getting yeah. more recognition yeah. Yeah, I, I just one last point, I guess, just in terms of legal standing. We've talked about the common rule in America, but in Europe, the Council of Europe drew up a treaty in the late 1990s um, to protect um, biological samples taken from patients. Um, and I think the wording is something that um, samples may be taken, may be stored and used for a purpose other than that for which it was removed, only if this is done in conformity with appropriate information and consent procedure. And this includes okay. uh, human tissues, organs, and blood. Does not include hair, nails, or skin, or presumably uh, stuff like stem cells and other things that in the late 1990s were not really a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that might need to be updated, perhaps. Um, <laughs> so your blood, your yeah. organs, and your internal tissues are fine. But your skin and your hair and your nails and other genetic mm -hmm. tissue from around you. That's a free is, for all. Uh, it's free for all. <laughs> the, the idea is that it doesn't have that inherent value, does it? That blood and organs do. Yeah. But those are things that can basically. Yeah. Vital to your life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, by the exactly. way, yeah. save people's yeah. lives. Yeah. I know you came for came in here for a colonoscopy, but while we're, while we were down there, we took a kidney. I uh, hope you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, yeah. But no, it's um, it's a fascinating discussion. I hope you at home enjoyed listening to it. Um, but let us know what you think about the story in the comments down below. Do you think the yeah. science needs to be updated, the, the, like regarding the law and consent, or do you think that there was nothing done wrong here and and the ends kind of justified the means? You know, with all the amazing research that came out of this, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. But Martin, I believe mm, you're going to be yes. leading us. And a quiz this week. I uh, will be the quiz master this week. Indeed. I'll, I'll do yes. a flip around. Oh, You'll yeah. be on top now. Wait, hang on. That's how no, you I, like it. That sounded wrong. That sounds uh, a bit dodgy there, Alex, but let's just do a quiz. <laughs> ready for this week's quiz, gentlemen? First, yeah. of course, you have to have I'm your so buzzers ready. at the ready. So what have you got for us this week in terms of your buzzers? I've got one I've used before, uh, a new favourite. Curry sauce all over your anus. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, quality. Quality. And Alex, what have you gone for? Uh, I don't think I've used this one before, but it's, it's a video that I was reintroduced to recently, and it's one of the best videos on YouTube. Everybody. I'm hanging out with my friend John. Fox 5 Morning News starts. Look over there. And it starts right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It just brings back memories, that, that video. If you haven't seen it, what, what's the video called, Alex? People can, we'll, put it in, we'll put it in the description maybe if you remember. Just, um, <clears throat> just type in on YouTube and it starts right now. And, it's, um, <laughs> and it starts right now. It's, Sorry, it's, it's just, I don't even know if I can explain it really. It's someone on a news show and they're using one of those water jetpack things. And, uh, and it, he's, he's supposed it's to like, face. he's supposed to say that and dramatically go and do some take aerial off. Yeah. acrobatics and take off. But he just immediately crashes into the presenter and falls <laughs> face flat into the, into the, into the ocean. And it's, it's just so funny. And it starts right uh, now. And it starts right now. <laughs> <laughs> Slap. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice, know. nice. Well, I've got yeah. 10 questions for you. Uh, a range okay. of difficulties, and it starts off nice and easy and remains fairly easy, so enjoy. Ooh, thank you. Easy, you could. I can deal with easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. question number one. What was the name of Buzz and Woody's owner in Toy Story? John, Fox News starts. Oh, right, right. It starts right now. <laughs> Alex, the... Uh, I was going to say the fingering master, but that's not right. <laughs> Alex is... <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, no, I'm not going to go that. <laughs> um, that would be Andy. That would be Andy. Well done. Well done. Okay, question number two. What is the capital city of Estonia? Starts, look over there. And it starts right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's in there again, Alex. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know this one. Estonia, I thought, oh, yeah. I, thought oh, I did. I got oh. it confused with Latvia, but... Um, no, I don't. I don't. What would Latvia be then? 
Riga, I think. It is Riga, but that's not the answer to this one. It's, it's not. So I will, <laughs> I will pass it I, will I don't pass know it Estonia. Uh, I can recognise the name, guess. I imagine, afterwards. Yeah. Mm, it's not Sofia, is it? That's not. Bulgaria. That's, that's yeah. Bulgaria. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Mm, I think I don't know. Mm. I don't. I don't think not I should sure. even guess that one. Not sure. Yeah, mm. it might be a, a no, or you don't. Um, I think it's a. I think I might just give the answer to this one then. Yeah. It is Italian. Oh, I wouldn't have got that. No, I wouldn't have got that. No, one. no. Fair enough. No, fair no, enough. Move on. Okay. But now I know. <laughs> yeah. What was it called? Sorry, Talon. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Question number three. How many balls are there in an over of cricket? I probably should have asked this one before, but I just wanted to make sure to see if you've been listening to previous cricket questions. In an Alex. oval. In over. Over. An oh. over. Have you oh, never seen right. a cricket match? That, I believe, heard of is an over. six. It is six. Oh. Six balls in one over. Yes. Did you know that? That, that was from uh, when I played... A bit of cricket in primary school, somewhere wow. stored, stored right in the back there. That's impressive. Nice. Um, nice. No, it was it was fifty percent a guess, but I was thinking it was either Educated four or guess, six. Clearly. But well, I couldn't remember. Yeah, it's there in your mind. You know, it stayed with you. I would have gone for eleven, you. so I would have been way off. <laughs> eleven. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I don't know why it's six. It's just it seems pretty arbitrary because mm. you can only have one bowler bowling six at a time. So, and then you have to switch. Switch bowlers. So you can't mm. bowl more than one in a row. But the maximum yeah, points they balls. can get is six, isn't it? Like in a, <coughs> yeah, in a hit. Hit. It, hit it over the boundary in the air, it's six. So six is like if a recurring, bounces, recurring <coughs> thing. Hmm. That's yeah, a good, ex- good those, extrapolation. Those, yeah. those two, really. Yeah. And then four. Four is the other one. If it bounces, it's four runs. Mm. Yeah. It's a rubbish anyway, game, isn't it? <laughs> enough cricket. I like to take him. Oh, I, don't, I don't mind cricket. I quite like cricket. I like to take a, a, a long barreled paintball gun with a sniper scope and just hide in the bushes at the edge of a cricket match. Because we're wearing white. They're all wearing white. That's good, yeah. Paint <laughs> Aim for the groin. Aim for the groin. Well they have they've got they've got a box in though. There's a That's cup the in least there, effective Robin, part. So. Yeah. That's the most yeah. protected. It's still hurt, but yeah. yeah, exactly. I know I'm not hurting them, but also oh. yeah, it's embarrassing. Embarrassing. It'd be funny, yeah. yeah. Especially if you go for green yellow. splodge. Yellow, yeah, yellow, yeah, they're, yeah, they're all green. Yeah, they get a bit of green yeah. on them anyway. But yellow is the luminous. One yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's something to bear in mind for the future. Sometimes question I question number buckets. four. <laughs> <laughs> Two number twelve. What was the fastest ever recorded time by a car? Sorry, speed. Like speed. Okay, <laughs> time, time. Time to what? <laughs> time. Speed by car. <laughs> Are you after? Yeah, I've in, got uh... miles per hour here, just for okay. reference. Okay. Curry sauce all over your anus. Delish. Okay, so I don't know we're, this. We're going to close I'm, swings. Fastest ever. I'm going to take. If it's a close swings, I'm going to take a punt and go for 500 miles an hour. The okay. closest swings. By car. Okay. By car. Yeah. Land, land speed record, right? Is that essentially mm. what you're asking, or are you? I'm asking. You know, what's the fastest fastest car? Okay, fine. It starts, right. okay. And it starts right now. <laughs> See, I, I think, yeah, the land speed record for, for a vehicle is going to be way higher. Um, but mm. a car, like a, a commercial car, or not even a commercial car, but a car, I'm going to go like 300 miles per hour. Yeah, right. yeah that's that's pretty close. 278. Damn it. By a, a Koenigsegg Agera RS for our, um, oh. our motorheads out there. Yeah, yeah, in 2017, so... All right. Would oh, you nice. would you guys would you be up for that? Giving that a go? Do we can beat the uh, beat the record? It'd be kind of fun. The G Force. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it's that track in Germany, isn't it? Where they where they test like the Bugatti and stuff. It's like a massive no, long no, no, five no, no, mile no, no, no ring. S- straight straight road. Um, oh, maybe it's not that. <clears> yeah, <throat> crazy, um, crazy. I think it'd be fun, but it'd be a bit. Like, I mean, imagine if there's a bit of a wobble at like 200 miles per hour. You wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't I know. Run. Imagine going back to the speed limit after that. But yeah. You know, like when you come off the motorway and you're mm. like, it's, it's a 30, yeah. and you're a bit like. <laughs> yeah, it feels crawling. like you're crawling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas if you were going through a town centre, it would be like. Yeah. So. You'll go uh, to open the door and it'll be like 60 mile per hour. 60 miles per yeah. hour still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, 3-0. <clears throat> Running away with it so far. Yeah, <clears throat> question five. <laughs> In the back. <clears throat> no, still plenty of time, Robin. Still plenty of time. Six mm. questions left. Question number five. What is the biggest dinosaur to ever walk the earth? Good morning, it starts. Look over that. And it starts right now. Yes. I don't know if this is, but I'm just going to go because that's the name of it. Gigantosaurus. It's not Gigantosaurus. Okay. (laughs) Curry sauce all over your anus. Delish. That was my first thought as well. But I do remember when we were little, something about an Argentinosaurus. Yes, correct. Yes. The, 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 the official name is the Titanosaur Argentinosaurus huinculensis. Very good. Very, Very good. good. Thank you for telling us. <laughs> 36 metres long, supposedly. Bloody hell. That's a big well, fella. I can't, even, can't yeah. even quite imagine that. That's, that's big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty pretty big old beast that one. It's one of those ones where yeah. like his lower leg bone is bigger than a human, <laughs> and he's like, oh, that is yeah. one big dinosaur. It is indeed. It is indeed. Okay, that is three one. So already only two points in it now. Question number six. <laughs> <laughs> How many vowels are in the English alphabet? It starts. Look over that, and it starts right now. Your time question. limit. Five. Four, Five. Three. Two. Any of answer on five? Uh, yeah. Curry sauce. Five and a half. <laughs> so what are they, Alex? Go through them. A E I O U. Correct. Yeah. Five is the right answer. Yeah, well done. What, what <laughs> was that? <laughs> what, what was that? What? Uh. <laughs> You know, just two points. What's the end of the answer? Yeah, that's what I was like. What's that all about? I got the answer <laughs> right there. <laughs> I was seeing if I could. I was seeing if I could uh, speak Psych to Psych us there. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Congratulations. I was, I was confused about the, the whether the Y would count. Is that what you were thinking, Robin? <laughs> yeah, that's why I said half like It's or a half vowel. Some people call, some, some people consider it a half vowel. Why? Yeah. I've never heard yeah. of it before. Yeah. like xylophone. You know, it has a kind of properties of a yeah. vowel in words like that okay yeah. mm. strange oh, well that's good, good good knowledge there for saying five and a half thing very good don't get a point but you know <laughs> I mean, your reasoning there was uh was was spot on i was i was having a bit of a laugh and you came up with it's a right. semi-serious answer that's fine uh, okay. i don't question mind <laughs> number seven that's uh, four okay. one in which city is the tallest building in the world starts look over that and it starts right now alex King of the buzzers. Just too slow. Is it Dubai? It is Dubai. It is the Burj Khalif, which stands at 828 metres tall. Most unnecessary building city. to ever exist. And city. Yeah, 820, no, 830 metres tall when Tom Cruise is on top of it. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, he well, did, didn't he? Just 828 metres and a half, really, yeah. Not two, <laughs> I was going to say 829 like, <laughs> implies a meter tall. Yeah. Oh. Okay, there we go. I mean, you, you've, I mean, you've, you've run away with this one, Alex. It's yeah, Alex has got this quiz. Is it five one? Uh, oh yeah, yeah five one. Yeah. Well, Number maybe eight, one day I will get the mug. Yeah, no, no I know it's you've true. Been busy, Martin. Maybe one day we'll see the mug. And you know? <laughs> it'll, it'll appear <laughs> on screen. Well, it's always appeared on screen. Version. It does exist. It does exist. You know, I've had it. I've had it in the background once. Um, I've actually. I've got to send back. I've got to send back something. A, 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 a package. So I will send it at the same time, Alex. Thanks for reminding me. Okay. It'll be with you shortly. Just send me your, your S- address. Send it in a separate also, package, though, right? Send you my address send straight away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> in a separate package, yeah, true. Question number eight. What type of instrument is a harmonica? Curry sauce. It oh. is curry sauce, well done. <laughs> <laughs> a wind instrument. I'm looking for a particular word. Oh, oh okay. Oh, Any okay. advance on a wind? It starts, look over that. And it starts hmm. right now! <laughs> Hmm. But is it technically a brass instrument? Oh. It's not a brass instrument. Oh. Oh, so no. you can get. Is that kind of what you're looking for? <clears throat> no, you were, you were you were pretty much there, Robin. But there's another oh. word within that as well. 
There's a word within that. Just yeah, so what did, you, what did you say? Breathy one. I said a wind you said instrument. A wind instrument. There's another word. A something wind instrument is my clue. A something wind instrument? Mm. I, don't know, <clears throat> I, I don't know enough about music. Um, I guess we think about what it would contain. What does, what does a harmonica contain? All over your anus. <laughs> uh, is reed. It is. It's a reed oh, wind right. instrument. I did not know that there was a reed inside a harmonica. <clears throat> right. Or is no, the whole thing a read? Is it, I don't know. Yeah, don't okay. question. Don't question the questions, Robin. You get into the reads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the thing when you're the quiz master. You can pretend to be smart and know all the answers just because you've looked them up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the joy of being quiz master. Uh, there we go. So that's a uh, six-two. I will say I didn't feel like that when we had Stu on the podcast the other week because he was he was oh, fact checking every answer. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, really? I felt very yeah, yeah. very yeah. intimidated. Being he did actually, the didn't he? Master. Yeah, he yeah. Did, there yeah. was one, wasn't there? One in particular. And he was like, "Well, actually, yeah, okay." <laughs> yeah. okay. <laughs> he challenged it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, question. I looked him up nine. after. I was totally right, but whatever. <laughs> Whoa! No, there was there was question. some confusion with one question. In fairness, fair enough, fair enough. That's the thing, though, isn't it? You know, not everything can be crystal clear mm. all the time, <laughs> every single quiz. But hopefully, this one's been fairly clear. Yeah. Question nine: How many holes are there on a standard golf course? A sauce all over your sauce. That's Robin. I feel like this is a trick question. Is it eighteen? It's eighteen. Yay! Major oh, question. Major question. Feel better. Okay. And question number ten: What piece of clothing is a trilby? Oh, <clears throat> was that was that you there, Alex? I think it was. Arr. It's one of the most fashionable pieces of <clears throat> clothing any fine gentleman or or lady could wear. Um, it's a hat, Martin. It is a hat. It's a hat. Trilby hat. Congratulations. Well, well, that was comprehensive, Alex. Congratulations. Um, Very decisive. Yep. You've been decisive and speedy on the buzzer, which I think probably helps because the questions, some of the questions were definitely fastest finger first, weren't they? Oh, yes. I was, I was pretty happy with my buzzer choice that week. I think yeah. that, that was, that yeah, was, that was partially responsible yeah. for that, that victory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. You also knew the answers, which helps. <laughs> <laughs> that does also help in a quiz, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bonus question time. Right. What is the capacity of an Olympic swimming pool? We just have the Olympics and the Paralympics in there. 50 metres swimming pool. What's the capacity in litres? Litres I'm after. Oh, in litres? Oh. Litres, yeah. So you can do was, your conversion was, if you like. I was, no, I was going to do it in Tom Daly's, but you know. <laughs> I'll accept Tom Daly's. How many, how many Tom Daly's would you put? Oh man, I'm bursting without actually knowing. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that's not that easy to know. I imagine this is a slight estimate because it's in litres and you could probably add, you know, one more litre to an Olympic pool. Mm. How deep is a pool? We're gonna How much space does a litre take? An Olympic pool. The Olympic pools are pretty deep, aren't they? Because yeah, you know, yeah. we've got the diving going on that's in them too. That's true, yeah. We're going to vastly underestimate yeah, or overestimate so. this, aren't we? Well, yeah, I buzz, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a 2,000 square litres cubed liters <laughs> I don't, wouldn't you just say liters in general i don't have cubed down here i've just got liters okay how many, liters. How many liters could you pour into an olympic pool that's what I'm going that's, so that's two thousand times two thousand times two thousand right if it's you're cubed. there with your, you're there with your rob you're there with your robinson squash bowl how many robinson squash bowls could you pour into you and now i think i think olympic that's underestimated actually two thousand liters it's probably a lot less than i think it is mm. just two thousand liters it's not a what? bar <laughs> six thousand liters i don't know 10,000 litres. Right <laughs> okay, okay, 10,000 litres, okay. See, a 50 metre swimming pool. I've got Robin's gone for 10,000 10, litres. I don't I'm, know what that is. You may, I'm going to go for a different concept. Stint. You must drink like three litres a day. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go 5 million litres. <laughs> 5 million litres, okay. we still be closer. 5, five million is <laughs> yeah. closer. It's, it's 2.5 million litres. Oh, right, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Wow, actually, yeah. Yeah, so let's hope no one takes a shit in it. Well, actually, <laughs> hang on. What? Do you think no, you have to Robin. drain 2,500 2, 2, litres? Robin's closer, right? Oh, actually, no, you are closer, aren't you? Yeah, you're technically closer. <laughs> it's right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. But like yeah. by, yeah, you are. No, you are. by 10,000, Robin's closer. <laughs> yeah, I claim you are, you my are moral victory. <laughs> I, just, I, I heard the big I number and I was thinking... 
I mean, you're, you're, the thing is, you're further away, Alex, but I, I feel that you're more right than 10,000 <laughs> meters. Yeah, he got the, he got the scale correct, <laughs> yeah. at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just oh, a slightly bigger yeah. swimming pool. That's what Alex was imagining. Whereas I was imagining a jacuzzi, I think, from the sound of things. I don't know. <laughs> you could have said one litre and you'd have been closer. <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> this, is why you, this is why you play it tactically. You could have gone for like 11,001. Yeah. Yeah. But you could have done, but you'd already you're won. overconfident, you'd already Alex. Won the quiz. You're like the Emperor yeah. in the Return of the Jedi. Your overconfidence was <laughs> <Yeah>. your weakness. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, it is the end of the episode. Do you want to do the sign off, Alex? Because this has been your episode. Yeah, I just you, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, oh well, I don't know what to say now. Thank, well, you, thank you for the quiz, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. That was a good quiz. That was fun. That was a very good. Quiz. Congratulations on your victory, Alex. I really like that quiz because I, I won by a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but thanks both of you for joining me this week, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. I, I think it was a really interesting story. Um, really yeah. makes you think about the ethics and scientists and what they're up to. <laughs> no, that can't be the takeaway. It, it makes you think about scientists and ethics and stuff. It does. It does. <laughs> makes, makes you think about your own bodily contents. <laughs> but what, let, let us know what you think of the story in the comments down below. And uh, I hope you listening at home enjoyed uh, the discussion this week. And if you did fancy signing up to Surfshark, go to surfshark.deals forward slash interesting um, and signing up really helps us out. It's 30 day money back guarantee for 83% off a two year plan and three months extra for free. Um, That's amazing. But thanks everyone for listening. Thanks both of you for joining me and we'll see you next time. Ciao for now. Bye.